Uh, okay, uh, thank you everyone for coming and uh, thank you the organizers. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about binary perception Efficient algorithm can find solutions in a rare, well-connected cluster. Uh, this is a very recent joint work with my advisors, Emmanuel Bay and Alan Sun. Okay, what is binary perceptron? Let's uh, start with the model. Uh, we start with a matrix G that are of size M by N, where each entry of G equals plus or minus one with probability a half that are ID distributed. See the picture below for illustration. And we look for a vector X that are of length N, where entry also equals plus or minus one. And for any real kappa, we consider the following solution set, which is a set of all x inside uh, plus minus one to the power n, such that our matrix time over vector, normalized by one over root n, is larger than or equal to kappa uh, entry wisely. So this is a matrix, the vector normalized by one over root n, the resulting vector is larger than or equal to kappa entry wisely. Okay, so um, why do we consider this binary perceptual model? Uh, time is limited, so let me just uh, give one word that the perception is actually building blocks for neural networks. Okay, um, when talking about binary perception, there are usually uh, three questions that uh, are of great importance. The first question is the existence of solution. Uh, more specifically, we look at the regime when M and N goes to infinity with a fixed ratio alpha. And we ask for what value of alpha is the solution set now empty? Okay, and the second question is uh, whether the solution space has certain very interesting structural properties. And the third question is efficient algorithms. So three questions in mind, existence of solutions, solution space structure, and efficient algorithms. Uh, today, actually, I will focus more on the second and the third question, but I will also talk about some uh, related literature in the first question. Okay, so before I move to the works, uh, let me mention a slight variant of the model called the symmetric binary perceptron. Uh, the matrix and the vector model is the same, but as the name indicates, we just look at the symmetrized version of the constraints. Namely, g times x take absolute value, normalized by one over root n, is less than or equal to kappa. So compared to before, we just add in this pair of absolute value and require the inequalities to be less than or equal to kappa entry wisely. Um, the reason that uh, people consider this symmetric binary perceptron model is because this is a more tractable model to work with compared to the original model, as we will just see in a second why. Um, and then uh, people expect uh, that similar structural properties and algorithmic properties uh, hold for the symmetric perceptual model. They're making this model as interesting to work with as the original model. Okay, just a remark. Um, so because this is called the symmetric binary perceptron, so we named the original model the asymmetric binary perceptron, or in short, ABP model. Okay, so now let's me, let me go to some previous works. Um, okay, so on the left-hand side, we see predictions for asymmetric binary perception. On the right-hand side, you see prediction for a symmetric binary perception. The x coordinate is kappa or, or k, and then the y coordinate uh, is the, it's the ratio alpha of m over n. So the so yellow region is a set phase where they expect to exist solution, and the white region is an unset phase. We define this very important uh, quantity called critical capacity, where alpha c of kappa, which means for a fixed kappa, you look at the largest alpha such that you are still in the set phase. Or in other words, this alpha c of kappa is the function value of this uh, black line, which indicates a transition from set to unset. Okay, so very interesting phenomenon is that if you look at this uh, blue line or green line uh, called the computation gap from the annealed capacity. So it's actually just uh, you compute the expectation of the partition function, uh, the resulting prediction coming from there. For the symmetric case, uh, the prediction getting from the annealed computation actually coincides with the prediction, the correct prediction. But then for the asymmetric case, you, you notice that there's a gap between the blue line and the black line. Uh, and the reason here is because some of the matrix are really uh, you behave that give rise to too many solutions that pushes up the expectation. So this is one of the reasons why the symmetric model is more tractable to work with uh, compared to the asymmetric model. Okay, so I want to mention that these are all physics predictions, but what are some rigorous mathematical results? Um, here is a list uh, of the results for the asymmetric binary perceptron. Uh, I don't have enough time, but I just uh, mentioned this uh, great breakthrough work by Dean and Sun in 2019, where they're able to give a capacity lower bound for the asymmetric binary perceptual model, which uh, actually depends on a numerical hypothesis. 
Um, this is a difficult model, but actually much more is known for the symmetric binary perceptual model. Um, some preliminary first and second order moment computation was given in this paper, and actually uh, a work by Perkins and Xu in 21, and a previous work by ours, um, are able to get uh, the sharp threshold and nail down the exact value. Um, I want to mention that uh, the work by Perkins and Xu works under a numerical hypothesis, and they're able to like uh, characterize the fluctuation of free energy up to this level. Um, compared to theirs, our result is unconditionally, and, uh, and our result actually uh, ca characterizes the distribution of uh, the partition function normalized by AC expectation, or in other words, have a more precise description for the, for the term here which also implies a strong result uh, called the uh, contiguity. Okay, so th these are just a uh, very brief uh, literature in answering the first question of the uh, existence of solutions. Let me go to the second question. Um, what are some interesting structural properties for, for this uh, perceptual model? And there's a, a very interesting property is called strong phrasing. Uh, what is strong phrasing? So recall that um, our solution is a length and vector, right? And you look at each entry of it. If you can't flip its sign, then this entry is called frozen. And if a vector has linear number of frozen variables, then it's called phrasing. And uh, through this uh, series of work, uh, asymmet asymmetric binary perceptron is actually predicted that typical solutions are isolated, which is a strong phrasing property. Uh, and this is expected to hold for any alpha in the set phase. Uh, this is not uh, like the same picture given by, for example, Bryce uh, just uh, 30 minutes ago, uh, that for, for uh, random constraint satisfaction, you don't really see for all alpha below in the set phase, uh, this, uh, this uh, property. But here they predict that almost all solutions are indeed isolated for any alpha as long as there are solutions. Okay, and this uh, phenomenon is extended um, to the symmetric binary perception case in this paper and rigorously proven uh, in the same set of paper. And, uh, and it is common again, their, their work under, uh, is under this uh, numerical hypothesis again, and ours is unconditionally and with a more detailed description. So in the symmetric case, this is strong breathing is rigorously proven. And in the asymmetric case, it's only like physics heuristics. Okay, um, so the in answering the third question, uh, in terms of efficient algorithms, um, mathematically, Kim and Rush in 98, they proposed a multi-scale majority algorithm that works for kappa equals zero in the asymmetric case, meaning like you look for half spaces. And this is proven rigorously. And in practice, uh, there are some very successful algorithms, uh, empirical uh, algorithms. Uh, for example, uh, this list of algorithms. Okay. So if we pause here for a second and think for a while, you look, you will find that there are some Similarly contradictory phenomena. You know, in our answering the second question, we see that this their typical solutions are isolated, or where we call the strong freezing property. Whenever you see something like this, you usually expect that there will be some certain amount of computational hardness, for example, uh, mentioned by Bryce, right? But then there are also efficient algorithms available. So how to explain this uh, seemingly contradictory phenomenon? Then on the one hand, there's computationally hardness, but on the other hand, there are also efficient algorithms available. Okay, so this is actually what uh, the, the work that I'm, I'm gonna present today. Uh, okay, so in uh, 2015, uh, a very nice paper by, by Baldassi and co-authors, they actually uh, had an idea and they predicted that this is actually due to the existence of rare clusters of positive entropy density. What does this mean? That Typical solutions are indeed isolated. This is true. This is proven, no problem. But then certain atypical solutions are well connected. And it is those atypical solutions that are found by efficient algorithms. So in other words, um, our, the computation done before sort of characterize what happens for the typical solution. But it's actually those atypical solutions that has nice, that has nice structural properties that are found by efficient algorithms. Okay, so um, our work rigorously verifies the heuristic here um, by having a theorem like this. So our theorem reads um, for both the ABP model and SVP model, when alpha is small, there exists a cluster with uh, uh, almost a maximal diameter with hypermobility. Okay, what does this mean by almost? 
So for the symmetric binary perceptron, we actually show that there is this cluster with diameter n, which is the largest diameter you can get, right? And then for the asymmetric version, we show that there's a cluster with diameter, you know, you can get arbitrarily close to n, basically. And further, such, such a cluster is actually accessible to polynomial time algorithms with hypermobility. Okay, so which sort of shows that there is this a large, well-connected cluster, and this cluster can be defined by polynomial time algorithms with high probability. Um, so just um, um, what are the implications of our, our result? Just to reiterate, uh, it firstly rigorously verifies the heuristics proposed here, explaining the similarly contradictory phenomenon of strong freezing and the existence of efficient algorithms. And um, a side consequence is that it also provides at first a rigorous efficient algorithm for both the asymmetric binary perceptron and the symmetric binary per perceptron for all, for all kappa uh, when alpha is small. Um, so recall that previously the only available rigorous result is for the asymmetric binary perceptron when kappa equals to zero. Ours is uh, working for, for all the two models for any kappa. Okay, um, so let me... Uh, let me end with an illustration and some open questions. So on the left, uh, you see a 3D plot. We try to use this uh, 2D space to indicate our solution space and the height to indicate how nice our solution is. The higher, uh, it means that the solution is a, uh, like a hard, high margin solution in satisfying those constraints. And um, the right-hand side are cross sections of the left-hand side picture. So roughly what this says is that from right to left, you gradually decrease your constraint density. And um, you can see that at the beginning, uh, you know, the, those high margin solutions lies in a small, like a linear size with small clusters. And then as you gradually decrease your constraint density, uh, the, the clusters becomes larger and larger until they're connected. And this could be the time when, in case the time that, uh, you know, there are efficient algorithms. So this leads to, you know, the first open question of ours, you know, can, can one uh, like uh, exactly compute what is the threshold for the existence of a large diameter cluster and whether this is the same as the threshold for the existence of an efficient algorithm. Um, and further, um, you know, is a large diameter cluster unique? Um, our method can sort of show that uh, the class of algorithms we use uh, all converge all sort of finds the same unique cluster, but it is the same like irrespectively of all the algorithms. It is uh, the unique large diameter cluster that exists. And also, as we decrease the constraint density, does this uh, you look at the largest uh, cluster diameter, uh, largest uh, diameter cluster? Uh, does this appear discontinu discontinuously uh, with respect to its diameter? So, for example, the, at the beginning is small. And then it's got larger. Is there suddenly a time that it becomes super big, like close to n? Okay, um, so that's it. Um, the, uh, that are all the questions. Uh, thank you very much.